Hi, it's Yuris and welcome to Tattoo Shop Talk. And today we will look at one really interesting and unusual gadget by company Inklo Pro Tattoo Machines. And this wonderful product you might have seen circling social media. And before we even start, full disclosure, this video is made in collaboration with company Inklo. This product was sent to me. And today we are looking at, at this crazy gadget. It's gadget by Inklo. It's called Inklo Phoenix 1.0 smart power bank tattoo grip which is a bit of a name 1.0 means something good let's stick to them to find out about that and this is this interesting tattoo machines grip that is also a battery pack very unusual product also very forward-thinking product we will take a look at its upsides and its downsides and maybe who this product is for and what in my opinion it could be improved on. Let's start with obvious hygiene. Every time it pops up somewhere, some advert or someone asks about it, all the comments are, you can't put it in autoclave, how are you planning to clean it, what's the hygiene with it? So that's the obvious thing that the elephant in the room. This product, it seems like it's engineered by somebody or some group of people who have listened to every complaint on every forum from every tattooist on paper kind of specs wise and what it's intended to be it's made top heavy and to reduce weight on a back of machine and to reduce amount of cables and also to get rid of maybe of pedal as well as power supply because this is kind of battery pack so it's the power supply in this unit and obviously you can put all of it in autoclave but at least you can put some of it this front part comes off and this is the part that you can scrub and rub and pack it and autoclave it and that's just the solid brass type of a thing weight wise as heavy as the machine is so for those who are always complaining that you need more weight up front for example disposable tips are too light so they have found this solution for this situation this one you can only spray and wipe it down. As of from 2020 in Denmark, there's obligatory hygiene course. It was organized and run by this doctor from some skin clinic. And on that course, it was multiple times pointed out that tattooing is not sterile procedure. You can have some elements sterile, but many of elements involved are not sterile. For example, in Denmark, you don't even need to cover station if you can spray it and then wipe it off. Same thing applies to machines. If you can wipe it down, then you kind of even don't need to sterilize it. Obviously, it's better for at least your own peace of mind that it's sterile it's disposable or it's autoclave but on paper you can get away with this and not only on paper but when you look at any tattoo convention you will see half of the pen machine crowd they would at best put some plastic on their machine but most of the times you will see people working only wrap their machines in something like just this grip tape and that's even not a barrier so that would let all the liquids through I understand those people who say it's not enough and I also understand that in reality it works other way around many people People don't autoclave their grips many people don't use disposable grips many people wrap them at best at best spray them down after they done working and everyone's been fine so far again not saying it's a good practice that's up to you to decide other elements in hygiene aspect would be that this is not made for cartridges this is made for regular needles so the argument on having or not having membrane in this situation doesn't exist because regular tips and regular needles don't have membrane so that safety aspect is not in this unit and again if we compare to pen machine and rotary machine crowd not all cartridges have membranes and many people choose just the ones that they have available and again all that safety talk kind of goes less important it's something to think about therefore this unit falls into big part of what modern tattooing is now in terms of hygiene in terms of how things are kept clean and how things are looked after that would be my thoughts on hygiene with this piece best you can do is autoclave the tip and wrap all you can rest of it and sanitize afterwards with sprays wipes and whatever you have at your disposal and now let's look at some more practical things about it and i will start with its weight and the whole unit weighs 104 grams and it also comes with this little cable it's rca cable as an option you can get different type of cable as well and that shouldn't change weight of it overall so let's drop this on scales as well and we are at 113 grams for a comparison i'll take the regular metal stainless steel grip and that we have at 160 so this would be way closer to good old stainless steel grip in terms of weight if we take it apart then we can see that this front part weighs 47 grams and unit itself is 57 grams 
Now on physical aspects of this gadget there are three buttons. The bottom one switches it on so you hold on to it and the gadget is on and screen is intended to be looked at sideways. And because it's sideways then this is power and on and off button and voltage is adjusted by up and down principle. With battery packs that I used to work with they are intended to be looked at this way. Voltage up would be to the right and down would be to the left. Since this is intended to be looked at flat then it's up and down so that was something to get used to it. Obviously it takes a couple of moments once you have it there you remember it and you work with it fine. That would be no problem. Screen itself is not too bright and it doesn't have two big digits but still you can see it through the plastic. You can have this would be double of the clipcord sleeve and you can still see the screen. It's not crazy bright you have to look at it a bit closer to see it. On the screen it shows voltage it shows how full is the battery and it also shows amps i guess they are meant to be amps it's something that's number and it ends with a and the weight distribution on a unit itself it has kind of more weight on one side and you can see it when you put it down it tends to roll over to its back with the screen up at the back here you can see usb-c cable which is nice which is modern thing to charge electronics with and when you order it in the box which is this neat box with a logo that is inside another box which is this one and then there's some instructions you get USB-C cable and this RCA cable and as I mentioned there's also optional other type of cable which I think was DC cable so I'm not sure what type of machine it would be intended to to be compatible be compatible, compatible for what machine it's for. And once I started to play with this thing, coolest feature I have ever seen in any connectors and electronics. This is the good old Apple type of trick. You put the cables closer and they are on magnets and they're pretty strong. So it can dangle and it's fine. And that's nice part when you set up machine it's not like only plugged in you have this wiggle room where you can adjust all the things and it works with machines any machines that have RCA connectors so it would work with Spectrus. And one thing you have to pay attention to when you assemble it it's all these positions where the cable comes out what sort of fitting you have will it be in a way or not and then obviously connect your RCA which is pretty tight fit, pretty strong, and bam. And you have this neat futuristic looking gun. Also would fit machines like dragonflies, same story there. This machine has skinnier fitting in here, so there are less things in the way. RCA cable, and off you go. And the grip itself, it fits disposable and it fits metal grips so for for those who want even more old school feel you can fit it with a metal grip easy way to adjust it at this end where grip attaches to machine and another easy way to adjust things would be just unscrew this and then you can play around with the length of a it and adjust it there if there's need for some micro adjustments and on these type of machines it feels very front heavy so I can't even balance it around the middle and one cool thing with all these connections is that it also works with machines like these some will say that's a blasphemy you don't put Dan Cuban on machine like this but this machine actually is the one I try this thing most with and it worked pretty fine in here you have to figure out how to position grip so it's not in the way of when you work and you can can see the screen adjust it there adjust it there rubber band and there we go that would work with all the futuristic looking stuff and it would also work with direct drives and this type of machines the main idea is as long as they have the RCA connector or the other weird one it will work fine as for packaging what I did is I put cling film over all this unit then I screw this tip part over the cling film and poke the hole in it so I can put a grip in I do understand that there could be some backflow if we're talking modern standards it should work and if you're a clipcord sleeve type of person then clipcord sleeve also fits over this unit obviously it's a bit easier with a bit wider ones previous one was 
55 millimeters, I think, and this one is 60. So this is super easy, but since it's all this biodegradable, it's not as strong. And with five centimeters, kind of on a super tight side, and you can still see the screen. This will be my quick improvised packaging. Tuck it underneath the tip. And as for machine part, just the machine bag with the rubber band work just fine. For extra safety, you can put extra rubber band or tie it with the tape. This part's going to go into autoclave, this part as well, or in other instance, it would be a disposable tip. And you end up with this situation, voltage up, down, and on, and off. It's pretty comfortable to work. Weight distribution is super nice. You don't feel anything at the back. You don't have cable that's catching on things. You don't have cable that's dragging over customer. And you don't need any pedals because all the magic's happening here. And now, who is this machine for? I do understand that most of very traditional tattoo artists will never look at this gadget at all. They like clip cords, they like loud machines, they like to talk about soldering needles. When you talk with some of those very traditional tattoo artists for some health starts to give in and then they kind of become a bit more open-minded to gadgets that don't involve pedals, that don't involve back heavy things, some vibrating things. So they start to look in all sorts of rotary machines, they start to look in battery packs. This would be maybe a good example for what to look at and what to try out, because this is super comfortable. From personal experience, once I stopped using pedals as much, I use battery packs or I use the way when you kind of tap a pedal and it starts to run, my back is way more thankful to me and I have less complaints in that department. So one would be traditional tattoo artists who for some reason want to or need to try this type of a machine. And another type of tattooist who this machine would be for would be maybe tattooists who have started only with all the pen type machines, with rotary machines, and then they have heard from other tattooists that maybe these more traditional type of needles have better ink flow, maybe they have heard that there's more control of needle because you can put all the rubber bands and that type of things, or like on dragonflies there's at least this wheel that somewhat holds the needle down, and they maybe want to try that type of workflow, maybe they have heard that working with this type of needles it's maybe a bit faster for lining and that type of works. Or there could be many reasons that they decide to try this way, but they maybe don't want to invest in the whole setup with like pedals, power supplies and grips and all that. So they can try with something like that. So in my opinion, those would be those two types of tattoos who would be maybe interested to try it. And obviously people like me who likes to try stuff. And now we're at the part where we talk about downsides. So the obvious downside that we talked in the very beginning is hygiene. You cannot autoclave it, but you can wrap it as well as many do with pen type machines. So that's kind of a modern standard already. And from what I know, for example, in Denmark, from the safety reasons, this would tick all the boxes. You can sanitize it, you can wrap it, that would be all good in that department. What would be nice to see is maybe less exposed USB-C kind of charging port. Also the buttons could have been those buttons that are sort of integrated in that plastic so there's no gaps in between them. I would assume that they know what they're doing and it's kind of safe. Obviously there can get some stuff inside and probably not damage the unit but there can be some yucky stuff collecting. And the main problem that I had with it when you disassemble it, when you take things apart, you would still have to get the dirty needle out and there's no way you are not going to touch anything on inside. And then again, we're getting back to the part where it's intended to be sprayed and cleaned and sanitized. It's a bit the tricky part, but you can get in a tube, you can do it. So that would work. As a solution, what would be a good option, in my opinion, would there would be kind of a grow like on those big magnum needles where you're done working and then you can just get it out from that side. In that case, you don't have to pull the needle out and you don't have to contaminate inside of tubes, apart from the backflow situations, if it happens. Screen could have been brighter. At this cost, for this type of a gadget, it's absolutely fine. When I work with it, what I found before I got used to it, you work and you focus on what you're doing and sometimes accidentally you place thumb or index finger on a button and you pull a line and suddenly machine stops and you're like, oh my God, did it die? Did I broke it? And then you see you, you just have switched off by holding on onto a button. That would be a situation like this. You work, you place a thumb over it, nothing changes, there's no sound, nothing, and it just switches off and you already switched off the unit. So there could be some sound or something where you 
press on it, at least it could like beep or something so you know you touched it. It is comfortable to work when it's all just here. For the safety reasons and for less contamination, it could be sort of maybe moved up and had it maybe sideways here just to have it out of the way and out of all the grippy touchy part. That is just my opinion. I tried this product. I liked it. I liked it for what it is. I like the fact that there are people who still work on products that try to invent some new crazy things. It's clear that they did listen to all the complaints about weight distribution, top heaviness, everything at your fingertips. It's cool, engineered, maybe a bit over-engineered product. Price of this product, last time I checked, it was $149. So that's cheaper than many big name battery pack brands. It's an interesting product, many good features. It have few downsides. Since this is called Inclo Phoenix 1.0 Smart Power Bank Tattoo Grip, 1.0 indicates that there might be 1.1 and 1.2 and different generations of this gadget which means that we might get somewhere cool and now you if you have used this product then share your thoughts and if you haven't used then share your thoughts what you expect what the future implies for products like these do you want to see them do you not what do you think about this video press that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and see you in a future episodes have a good one and stay safe